A strong employer brand is important if you want to recruit today's top talent. But how do you measure an employer brand and what metrics should you be using if you want to grow fast? When you're thinking about your metrics, try to pick the one goal that helps you reach your biggest business objective and let the other stuff be more of health indicators than main drivers. For us overall, it's going to be qualified applicants and that's going to be our one goal or metric. In this episode of Growing Brands, you'll learn how to measure your employer branding efforts and which key performance indicators or KPIs to select based on your specific tactics. We'll also look at a ton of different metrics that you should consider as a part of your program. Plus, we've got special guest Sean Bester from Whole Foods to help us understand the difference between vanity metrics and the numbers that truly matter to successful employer brands. Stay tuned. First, let's briefly cover what an employer brand is and why you should measure it. Much like how consumer brands are the combined feelings, thoughts, and emotions that a person has for a product or service that a company offers, an employer brand is the overall impression that company makes on its current employees, prospective hires, and people who work in the industry. The employer branding space is really heating up, especially in competitive hiring spaces like technology, product, and growth marketing. Tactics range from team-wide social media trainings all the way up to using one-on-one -on -one personalized marketing experiences when recruiting for key positions within the company. And at the heart of any good employer branding program is a measurement strategy. After all, you can't improve what you're not measuring. Let's take a look at some common employer branding tactics and how to measure them. For starters, this wouldn't be a proper tutorial about marketing measurement without the use of a funnel analogy. Much like building consumer brands, the employer branding process also has a top, middle, and bottom of the funnel. At the top of the funnel, you have industry awareness and perception. In the middle of the funnel, you have candidate experience. And at the bottom of the funnel, you have employee experience. And before we get into each section, let's make a quick distinction. When we say the word metric, we mean any number that you can calculate to support your business goals. And when we say the word key performance indicator or KPI, we're talking about the one or two very special metrics that should drive your business decisions in a particular area. All KPIs are metrics, but all metrics are not KPIs. Now, let's take a look at what metrics you should consider using to measure your employer brand. The first step in building any employer brand is to grow awareness and positive perceptions of the company within the industry. The goal at this stage is to understand A, how many people know about the brand, and B, what do they think about it? Measurement at this stage is intuitive, although not always straightforward to achieve. The most common top of funnel employer branding metrics are brand awareness, social media engagement rates, brand sentiment, brand characteristics and associations, and branded search impressions. Okay, someone in the industry knows about your brand and has developed a favorable enough opinion to apply for an opening at the company. The next step in any employer branding measurement program is the candidate experience. At this stage, it's all about the recruitment pipeline and metrics to support it. The most common mid-funnel employer branding metrics are candidate or hire quality, cost per candidate or hire, source of hire, offer acceptance rate, and hiring manager satisfaction. The last step in creating an employer brand measurement strategy is to select metrics to support the bottom of the employer branding funnel or the employee experience. At this stage, you're looking to track how your employees feel about the company, measured both internally and externally. The most common bottom funnel employer branding metrics are employee satisfaction scores, employee referral rates, employee retention and attrition rates, and employer site reviews and ratings. Now that we have a good idea of how to measure an employer brand, Let's take a look at a real life example. For that, today, Sean Bester joins us on Growing Brands. Sean is the team lead of global employer brand marketing at Whole Foods. We had a chance to ask him about his team's KPIs and metrics and how they went about choosing them. So what's a good process for picking your employer branding metrics? Yeah, so one of the things that I wanna acknowledge off the top too is to whoever's watching this, you know, if you're in this space, the majority of people are either a one person team or a small team, or really you've been predominantly HR recruiting and you're doing this on the side to help your company. So really there are very few companies that actually have built out teams with big enough budgets to measure this stuff effectively. Uh, so that's more the exception, not the norm. So don't beat yourself up if you have these crazy high expectations because you know this space still isn't as developed as true growth marketing teams are. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, 
you know, I really like this question because what I know from marketing back in my days in SaaS is everybody's playbook is a little bit different. So the output might be different for you, which is why I'll talk a bit broadly here. So for my team, and I think this is very replicable, no matter what size you are or how much, how many people you have on your team, you know, we pick one metric and then everything else is a health goal of a strategy. So the reason that we do this is because it gives us more room to think about the process instead of the outcome. So if you have like a bunch of different main metrics, most likely you're going to be splitting off most of your time. And then oftentimes your overall outcome is not going to be super clear. So by identifying one main metric to go after, you're going to gain focus and clarity uh, into where you're going. So for us, everything cascades down from one goal. And then we split it into two sections, organic branding and direct response. And we do that because it's a lot easier to bucket your efforts into these two areas, uh, which means you don't have to chase as many metrics or goals. So then those two buckets have health metrics that we'll check, but it's not anything that we'll obsess over because we're at the end of the day looking at that one goal. So when you're thinking about your metrics, try to pick the one goal that helps you reach your biggest business objective and let the other stuff be more of health indicators than main drivers. Sure. So that way you don't get distracted by all the little things going on. You've got kind of like a, <clears throat> a North Star and that's kind of leading you to the right uh, path there. So, okay, great. So what are some of the most important metrics or some of your key performance indicators that you're using now that you mention it? Sure. So for us overall, it's going to be qualified applicants and that's going to be our one goal or metric. And it can be both applied in a short-term campaign or as a long measure of focus. So if you think about it, if you're running a month-long campaign, you can easily check how many qualified applicants you've driven. And then year over year, you can see if you're increasing your qualified applicants. And you know, the overall goal of effective career branding, in our opinion, should be to hire better people faster. And so for us, this is why I mentioned everyone has different playbooks. We get about 1.5 million applications per year at Whole Foods. So uh, we need to not necessarily yeah. add more applicants. Yeah, right. We don't need to add more applications. Rather, we need to identify and drive like a qualified candidate into the pipeline. So when your goal is to drive a qualified candidate, it gives a lot of clarity and option to what marketing playbook you roll out. Uh, one other one that we end up using is time to hire, which again is short or long, but we use it as long as it relates to really branding. So if you think a lot about the branding work that you do, Sometimes when you're a smaller team, it's really tough to measure everything outside of maybe engagements or likes or followers or whatever it may be. The reason that I like time to hire for branding is because if you're telling the right stories and you're reaching the right people, eventually for some of these tough to fill roles or these new roles that you're opening in certain areas like marketing or tech or whatever it may be, you're going to find that your time to hire goes down a little bit more uh, if you're doing this correctly because uh, more people are going to be seeing your stories and, and captivated by it. So I like that one for, for branding. And then, you know, for that branding area, again, it's more in the tactical area. It's usually going to be also overall engagement too. Like I mentioned, this doesn't have to be a massive thing where you're hyper analyzing things, especially when it comes to daily social posts. It's more like one of those metrics you get a feel for over time where you say your baseline might be 85 likes and comments on a post. You'll see if one type of piece of content will consistently either be a below or above that. And then you can make actions based on that. So those are really the big ones for us. You know, it's going to be the qualified applicant is going to be the main goal. We have time to hire for branding. And then we can also look at overall engagement, but really the big one and our one goal is going to be a qualified applicant. Those are excellent philosophies and tactics for employer branding and how to measure it. Sean Bester, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Josh. If you like this episode, then take a few seconds to head over to our website to download our employer branding metric checklist or subscribe to our newsletter, which contains exclusive brand measurement and growth marketing tips that I don't share anywhere else. Okay, you're up. How do you measure your employer brand? What metrics do you use at each stage of the funnel? And what special metrics do you reserve for your key performance indicators? Let me know by leaving a comment real quick before you leave. Is it recording? Should you, bleh, oh boy. Just be, ah. mixed mess. Why can't I say that? Flank steaks. Oh, f you script thingy. Would you go back in time and make sure that I didn't say it that way? Thank you.